back to another edition of the podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pagani, joined alongside Tri City Storm defenseman Philip Blais Savoie. Philip, welcome to the podcast. Thank you again for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, how have you been doing recently? I always like to, you know, open up with the guests how they've been talking about their week. What, what have you been up to recently? Um, I mean, just been hanging out here at home. Um, been working out, skating, just trying to stay ready for camp and the season coming up so um yeah season off season's been going pretty good so um yeah i have nice. a, like i assume you've taken some like a couple weeks off right from the season before getting back into the grind right yeah i took a week or two off and then just hung out with friends and everything and then started getting back to it i mean i don't try not to skate too hard usually just you know yeah light it. skating right yeah pretty much and obviously you don't want to kind of tie yourself out at the start right of your off-season training yeah exactly i mean we have uh we have a camp coming up for tri-city so just try to light skate and keep ready for that keep in shape for that so with the off-season info swing what parts of your game are you looking to improve upon um definitely trying to improve on like my offensive blue line I think um just work on moving better up there moving into my shots and just like getting shots through especially and then um yeah and then you can always just like get better at skating stuff like that work that can help you offensively and defensively so um just always working on little things like that getting into a bit of your story uh, was there a player growing up who you wanted to model your game after um, I mean, I watched a lot of like Eric Carlson. I mean, he was here in California for he played in San Jose, so um, watched a lot of him. I was a Habs fan growing up as well, so I watched a lot of PK Subban, um, just guys like that. You know, I loved watching those guys like move on the blue line and get shots doing everything. So they are two of the most like dynamic, electrifying yeah. offensive defensemen in the game. No, for sure. Yeah, no, they move so well on the blue line, so it's like. Yeah, it's super fun to watch those guys. And I'm a Habs fan myself, so I can definitely relate to watching P.K. Subban. He yeah. was so awesome. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so electrifying when, like, all those playoff goals and everything. Like, yeah, he was great to watch. Who influenced you to get into hockey? Uh, definitely my dad. Um, he played growing up. Um, yeah, like, he works at our, at our rank. He, like, does everything for us. Like, he gets, like – he coaches me whenever, like, during the summers and everything. So um, he was definitely a big reason why I got into the game. So, yeah, I owe a lot to him. Yeah, exactly. Well, an interesting note that I found while researching was that both of your sisters play college and the university level. Uh, having them in your yeah. family must help choosing, like, what path to go down when it gets to that yeah. time, right? No, yeah, for sure. Like, I had the two options of uh, major, junior or the college route so then having seen both my sisters go through the college route it definitely helped push me that way and I mean it's going well so far so and it's nice that like you you have that opportunity to at least watch one of your or two of your sisters go through the major junior route right you're not you're not the older sibling you're the younger yeah. one in this scenario mm -hmm. right yeah I'm the youngest so um definitely it was definitely a big help watching them go through everything and you know, kind of, I wouldn't say mentor me, but like kind of, it was, I was able to see how they did everything and how it worked out for them. You are from San Jose. Did you become, so you mentioned you were a Habs fan growing up. Were you a Sharks fan then when you, you know, since you're from that there? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a Sharks fan. Um, yeah. I kind of, I mean, my parents are from Quebec, so we kind of cheered for both growing up. So, but yeah, I was went to Sharks games growing up, and that was always fun. At least it's not the division rival, right? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, they only play each other twice a year, so. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's easy to root for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. The Sharks had the big cup run in 2016. What do you remember about that time? Um, I mean, we were, or like, we were fortunate. I was at the game, game six, where they lost to Pittsburgh. So that was definitely the biggest memory from that, just being at the game and, like, watching Crosby lift the cup and everything. Um, that was pretty cool. And then um, just like other games throughout the playoff run, just like being up late at night, like on a school night, like watching them win, going to like triple overtimes and stuff like that. But 
Yeah, it, that was, always... it was a grind of a playoff run. Yeah, no, that was a great run, but yeah, didn't didn't get it done, but it's all right. It's interesting because now you've had two of your favorite teams, both San Jose and Montreal, make cup runs, but yet they haven't yeah. lifted Lord Stanley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> it's just a I, bit of bad luck. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but. Are are you a fan of any other teams like in the NFL, MLB? Like, what other sports do you follow along with, if any? Yeah, I watch. Um, yeah, I watch a lot of NFL. So I, I'm a 49ers fan. That's the local team. So yeah, they've had a couple rough runs in the past, but um, yeah. And then I watch the Giants for baseball. That's my team. So yeah, absolutely. Like obviously, I got the Jays hat on. Yeah. I'm a Bills fan, so uh, you know it's nice that uh, you got your 49ers kind of deep playoff run. I'm still waiting for my mm-hmm. deep playoff run. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's we just can't. Both of our teams can't win a championship. It's so sad. yeah, it's got to got to come through at one point. <laughs> Before joining the Storm, you spent time with the San Jose Sharks junior program. Uh, mm-hmm. In what ways did they help with your development? Um, I think it was a lot of just like, um, like my dad was there. Um, so I was able to like get on the ice whenever I wanted. Um, and then I think like our, t- like our teams weren't always great. So I think it taught me like a different way to play the game. I think... Um, the year before going to Tri City, um, it taught me a lot, like how to defend. Um, it taught like how to break out because I was like we we're. Uh, I felt like we were always in the D zone a lot of the time, so it taught me how to like break the puck out a lot. So I think it was just like, I use little things you wouldn't really like think of, but I think a lot of that like built up and it like helped me get to where I was, where I was ready to play in Tri City. How beneficial was it to have minor hockey, your minor hockey, so close to home? It was definitely beneficial, like not having to travel and everything. Like, I, like we, yeah, we're really lucky that there's only three AAA teams in California. So having one like right in my hometown was really big. So, um, yeah, like, because for some guys, like, you're like, we guys on our team who travel like two, three hours to come to practice. So, like, that's just, like, kind of a bag. Like, for me, the rink's five minutes away, so it's super nice. When the pandemic came, how did that impact your game? Um, I definitely slowed everything down. I mean, especially for us o- over here, um, everything, like, our rink shut down everything. Um, so it was just, like, a lot of, uh, like, work and shooting in the driveway. Like, we like we had weights in the garage just, like, trying to stay in shape and, get better but yeah it was definitely tough but, it was um, all the dryland training yeah pretty much like there were like no gyms were open or anything so it's just like do what you can and hope it works exactly you're it was so it was brutal because i'm like in ontario here we almost had the same exact rules as you guys in california our rings yeah. were shut down gyms were shut down everything was shut down and we're just like okay well what do we how are we train? right how do hockey players train it's, it's almost yeah. nearly impossible yeah, pretty much. Like, like we, like we got pucks and tarp here, so I was just shooting pucks in the driveway every day. It seemed like, but yeah, it was just like do anything you can to stay in shape and try to get better. What do you remember from the world shutting down? Um, I just remember like for us, like the big thing was like being at school. Like we were at school, and I'm like. I was, like, with all my friends and everything. We're all, like, oh, like, we're just going to get, like, a two-week break. And, like, we're, like, this is going to be cool. And then, we look like, six, seven months later, and we're stuck in our rooms at home on Zoom. But, yeah, I mean, I guess it worked out. Now we can do stuff like this. But Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it, was, it was pretty crazy. Well, yeah, and I, and I was in a similar situation as you. I was at school when I found out about it. And first, the NBA shuts down. We all know about that. That was really the mm-hmm. turning point. And also, yeah. like, the Sharks were going to, like, announce they were going to have games in their home arena with zero fans. So, like, we're yeah. like, what the hell are they going on about? So, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, well, hopefully that happens, you know, because obviously we love hockey. Hockey's our go-to sport and just did not happen. NHL shut down a few days later and mm-hmm. look what happened, right? Exactly. It was crazy. Last year, you spent time with, you know, the Sharks, San Jose Sharks Jr., 
um, 16U and 18U team, and even Valley Christian High. Uh, yeah. How did you make sure to keep your motor going? Because that's a lot of hockey in such a short amount of time. Yeah, I mean, um, for us over here, um, high school is more just like for fun. So that was more of just like, it was like, we I think we played games once a week. So it's just like, be like, be there, like hang out with my buddies and everything, just like have fun. Um, and yeah, for the 16s, it was like, um, yeah, I think I practiced like four or five times a week. So it was like, just rest, like get enough sleep at night. And then um, just like, try to like, I don't know, our practices weren't usually too difficult, but yeah, it was definitely a little bit of a grind. When you're switching between teams, did you have any troubles finding chemistry with your line mates? Uh, not really, because when I played, I played uh, with the 18s the year before. I played two years of 16s. So then uh, I like knew pretty much everyone on that team. I'd practice with them all the time. So, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty easy. To it makes the transition teams. a lot easier. Yeah, a lot easier for sure. And plus, like you're not a stranger walking into that locker room. Like everyone mm-hmm. knows you. It's like you're walking yeah. to your second family. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, with Valley Christian High, you guys, like you mentioned, you're. It's kind of like it feels like a dropping kind of scenario. Mm-hmm. Um, just having fun. When you have that, it must be nice to kind of take off some stress from like the everyday grind that you have with like eighteen. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. Like, I don't know, it's just like buddies from school. Like, you wouldn't think like guys you're going to play hockey with, but it's like you just go out there and you're having fun. Like, it's a good time. And then, like, usually the competition wasn't good. So you're getting like three, four, five points a game. So it's just like, it's pretty fun. Just you're riding hockey. up the score. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Everyone can be their own Connor McDavid. Yeah, exactly. How did you end up joining Tri City? Um, well, I mean, uh, they drafted me back in like 2021, I think. And then, yeah, I'm just like talking with those, like over and over with those guys. And then, um, yeah, it just seemed like a good opportunity. So, I mean, they wanted me, I wanted to go there. So kind of just all worked out. Now, most of your hockey up until that point was played in San Jose. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, how did you adjust to the move, you know, going to Tri-City? Because that's probably in a place where you're not that comfortable in yeah i mean um it wasn't too hard i mean but i had both my sisters leave home so i saw how it was for them and then um like they like i was alone at home for a while so it was kind of just like wasn't too bad and i'd gone out there a few times beforehand just like see how everything was so yeah well like it wasn't too hard but it's definitely a little different than being here what was the biggest jump in terms from in terms of you, uh, you know, coming from the 18s to the USHL? Um, I think at first it was definitely the speed, like just how fast, like guys like stay on you so fast, like the puck moves a lot faster. Um, so it just takes like a little bit of time to get adjusted to. Um, I think, yeah, like I think I adjusted to it relatively well over the course of the season, but like there's still just always like little things you can be better at uh you guys made the playoffs and went up against the musketeers in the first round and swept Mm -hmm. them when it's that best of three series how vital is it to get that first win under your belt i think it's so like it pretty much determines the series like if you're if you lose that first game it's like you don't really have much of a shot because then you gotta go beat the team two nights in a row so it's like um yeah like it's really and then they've got all the momentum like your back's against the wall it's just like it's really hard to get back into it it was a tightly contested series against the Fargo Force in the second round Mm -hmm. how did they neutralize your scoring threats um I think they just had they just had a good game plan like they matched up our forward lines really well um it was just like, felt like it was hard for us to uh, get anything going offensively, it seemed like. But um, yeah, I mean, it was tough. The playoffs are always tough for us because um, Fargo had the first round by and then we did the long travel. So it's always tough to go move from one series to the next and then stay dialed in and get ready. But that's what it is. They had a good team. 
moved do, on. Do you think that having the rest when you get that first round by is you know more important than playing out a series so you get like kind of playoff ready? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, um, I think so. I think the rest is big because for us, it's not like you're talking about like Florida right now, like you're going to have like 10, 11 days off. Yeah. And that's a, that's a big time to be off for us. It's more, it's just like a normal week. Like they just have like the normal week off. So I think uh, having that is really important. Yeah. I was kind of alluding to that. Cause like, you know, with the Stanley cup finals where right, we have Florida 11 days off and then Vegas, they're coming off a six game series. So they're kind yeah. of like already amped and dialed in and ready to go. And mm-hmm. Fuller's like just chilling there. So that's why I yeah, kind of wanted much. to ask the question. Yeah. Um, what are you going to remember most about this season? Um, I think just like the turn or like our team kind of took, it was like at the start of the year, we we're kind of like bottom of the standings, like where like not much was going, like it was tough to win games and we get around like Christmas time and see like everything just like switched, like we made a couple of trades, brought guys in and then like we kind of just took off and then like there's a point in time where we were like knocking on the door for second place like we would have had to buy but it didn't work out but yeah I think that was big for us and then and what kind of factored into that big turn that you kind of mentioned there was it the trades was it someone stepping up in the locker room saying something I think it was kind of just like um after we made all those trades and saw what our team looked like I think it was just like everyone in the room like had the belief like we have the team to do this like we're able to make a deep run here so like, I think everyone just dialed in and we got going right there. Everyone the bought into the system. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, you're a draft prospect for this summer's draft. What are you going to do to prepare for that? Um, I mean, just been uh, working, like working out. Um, I'm working with the uh, Golden State Warriors trainer here. So um, he's been big. He's been a big help. And then I got on the ice, like, whenever I want with my dad, which is super nice. So, um, yeah, I've just been doing little things to stay ready, see what happens. How did you get connected to this Golden State Warriors uh, trainer there? Um, well, he was the uh, old trainer for the Sharks. So I got, got in touch with him when he was with the Sharks and then been working with him for the last couple summers. What are you going to bring to the team that does draft you? Um, I think I'll just um, bring a like reliable game, someone who like plays the game the right way, just um, like moves the puck, breaks pucks out, defends well, and then can chip in offensively when needed. So I have a couple quick fire questions, starting with yeah. why do you wear number 10? Because uh, my birthday is June 10th. What's your favorite off ice activity? Um, Definitely just like relax and hanging out with friends, hanging out with my girlfriend. Just, you know, try to stay low. Not yeah, exactly. Only, a lot of players have said that they like to golf. Yeah, I like to golf. I'm not, not great at it, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy going out, playing with my friends. Look, I don't golf either. I just mini putt, all right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, who's the hardest player you've had to defend and why? Ooh. Um... I would say probably um, Conmi or Knubel. Um, Those guys were definitely the two tough ones in the playoffs. Um, they just got, like, so much speed. They're so shifty. Um, so, yeah, those two are definitely the toughest to defend. Just got to have that good gap control, right? Yeah, pretty much. Good gap and good stick. Where has been your favorite vacation spot? Um, we went to France when I was younger. That was definitely cool. Saw Paris and everything like that. So that was definitely cool. I would really love to actually go to California one day. Yeah, no, it's nice. Yeah. It's not too not too sunny right now, but when it gets nice, it's oh yeah, a lot, it, a lot I, of sunny like, days in a row. Yeah, I like I've heard from a couple of my buddies who've been there before. They're like, yeah, like it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the weather's you like pretty much always nice. So, do you have a favorite TV show or movie that you you've watched in the past? Um, I mean, for TV, it'd probably be The Office, and I'd binge that one pretty well, but, um, yeah, and then movies, probably, like, Top Gun. Oh, dude, movie. Top but, Gun is, yeah. like, top tier. That's S-tier. That is yeah. such an S-tier movie. That's no, a great movie. 
Uh, and as we're closing off this interview here, do you have any advice for younger hockey players? Uh, I would, I don't know. I'd say just like keep work and like um, do what you can. Like don't get ahead of yourself. Just stay in the moment and enjoy the process. I'd say. All right. Well, I'd like to thank again, Philip Blaise of for joining me on today's podcast. Thank you again, Philip. Yeah. Thanks for having me.